Welcome to Textbook Engineering Problem, where we explore complex engineering problems and discuss different methods for solving them. In this video, I'll be breaking down a problem and discussing different ways to tackle it. However, keep in mind that there is no one correct path for some of these solutions, and I encourage you to share your own insight, insights and thoughts in the comments. Together, we can learn and improve our problem-solving skills. So, sit back, grab a notebook, and let's dive into today's problem. Today we're working out of Elementary Principles of Chemical Processes 3rd edition and we're doing problem number 5.12. It says a gas cylinder filled with nitrogen at standard temperature and pressure has a mass of 37.289 grams. The same cylinder filled with carbon dioxide at STP has a mass of 37.440 grams. When filled with an unknown gas at STP, the container mass is 37.062 grams. Calculate the molecular weight of the unknown gas and then state its probable identity. So to start off, I say, okay, we're, we started off with nitrogen. Now I kind of lost that after a little while, so let's just get rid of that. Um, gas number one is nitrogen, gas number two is carbon dioxide, and gas number three is unknown, right? Okay. So nitrogen, carbon dioxide, unknown. We have to find out what the unknown is. Um, Mg stands for the mass of the gas, and Mc stands for the mass of the cylinder. So all the masses they gave to us are a combination of the mass of the gas plus the mass of the cylinder, okay? We know that standard temperature is at one atmosphere. There isn't a standard volume unless you have like a standard amount of moles or a standard amount of materials that you're starting with in which case there is a standard volume for amount uh, if you have the amount of material known. Otherwise, standard temperature and pressure just refers to the pressure and the temperature, not the volume. Okay, so in this case we don't know what the volume is. Okay, we just know what the standard temperature and pressure are. This is the ideal gas law. We know that the mass of the gas is equal to the molecular weight of the gas times the number of moles. Okay, so if we want to know the mass of the gas by the ideal gas law, we would have to use this combination. They gave us this, where A is just equal to this number. I didn't want to keep writing the numbers over and over again, so this is A and this is B. Okay? B right there. Okay. So we have two equations and two unknowns. Well, what are the two unknowns? Well, the two unknowns are V and the mass of the cylinder, okay? So we don't know the volume of the cylinder and we don't know the mass of the cylinder, okay? So we can get both equations in terms of the volume of the cylinder and the mass of the cylinder. So this is equation one and this is equation two. Then we use uh, substitution, whatever method you want, figure out um, that the volume of the cylinder is that and the mass of the cylinder is this, okay? Now we, we move on to part, the next part where we calculate what the mass of gas three is and determine its molecular weight so that we can calculate um, what element it is, okay? So they said it, it weighs, or it has this much mass. Um, we subtract off the cylinder mass from that, okay? And then we can use this information in order to then calculate what the molecular weight is because we know this value from this equation, okay? So we calculate all that out, this is all known, and we get that we've got a molar mass of 3.966 grams per mole. Okay, so it likely is, um, if it's mostly a pure substance, it's it's probably um, helium, okay? So, because helium is the closest to it. So hydrogen is gonna be uh, lighter than that, and lithium is a metal one, okay, that standard temperature and pressure, it's a, it's a metal, so it's not a gas, and it's much heavier, okay, so it's not lithium, it's not hydrogen, it's got to be helium, okay, so that's it for problem number 5.12, thank you for watching, and I hope you found this video helpful in your problem solving journey, remember there are other routes you can take to arrive at the same correct answer, and I encourage you to leave a comment with any additional insights or questions you may have. Also, if you have any specific engineering problems you would like me to cover, please let me know in the comments. Your feedback is valuable, and I look forward to continuing the conversation with you. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more engineering problem-solving videos. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next video.